I've debated a long, long time to discuss this story. It's going to be really different than anything else I've ever talked about. The year was 2004. Yes, I remember it very well. There's a reason I remember it very well, because it's really, really freaky. I'm at my desk, and I get this email. Gypsy Rose. Yes, I remember the email, because it's, once again, very, very freaky. So, <clears throat> Gypsy Rose I have seen your ads on Craigslist. You often sell a lot of furniture. Are you interested in buying some? And I said, sure, why not? Could be good stuff. Where do you live? I'll come out and look at it. Well, she sends me the address. And I go to the house. And the door is slightly ajar. And I hear this voice, very delightful southern voice. Come on in, darling. So I go in. And there's this little woman who looks like she is thrust from the 60s into the 2000s. I mean, the whole house looked like it, but the house was sweet. The house was immaculate. And there she is. She's like, hi, how are you doing? I was like, fine. And she's like, well, I've got to go somewhere. But look around and let me know if you're interested and just email me. And with that, she was gone. And I swear that she moved faster than any old old lady that I've ever seen in my life. Cause I look I looked up, she was just gone. I was like, okay, she told me to go look around. So I go look around, right? And the house is like in a time capsule. Everything is from the 60s. And there's something else, because the lady was like super neat, right? But there was like dust on everything. And I thought. You know how we like to explain stuff to ourselves that doesn't make sense and we want to rationalize it. So it's like, well, maybe she's just selling it. Maybe the house has been abandoned for a while because the house was immaculate, but it was dusty. Very, very dusty. So I go around. I got my little legal notepad. I'm taking stuff. I was like, I, I could sell all of this stuff, right? So I go back downstairs. I'm looking for her. She's not there. I just leave. So, so far, so good. I just tell her through email, Gypsy Rose, hey, I can sell your stuff, but there's so many good items that it would just make sense for me to advertise and sell directly from the house. I get a response, lovely. That's it, lovely. And then I email her, like, you know, you want to talk percentages? And this is where it gets super freaky. She says, she says you, keep you keep what you, what you sell. sell. I just want the house empty. 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 Okay. I'm like, are you sure? So I sent her a very detailed email just to be sure that you're saying you want me to sell all this stuff and keep all the money. And I get another email. Yes. That's it. So... I go back to the house. There's a note on the door. Help yourself, darling. I'll see you soon. That's it. And I'm just like, okay. And I've had all types of really crazy situations with Craigslist. But this was just, it felt odd. It wasn't scary odd. It just felt odd. So, long story short, just speed up. Sold most of the stuff. Advertising on Craigslist, met people there because one day I go there and there's another note on the door and there's a key in the note. An old key. And the key was hot for some reason. Don't know why. Well, as uh, I'm selling stuff, things are going well, I just feel the need to reach out to Gypsy Rose. And I email her and I said, Well, we're almost done. And uh, how do you want to do this? And I get this, long, the longest email I get from her. I'm very happy with your work. 
it is very good in this day and age to meet an honorable man. You did everything that I asked. I am internally grateful. Gypsy Rose. That was it, right? Okay, now this is where it gets freaky dicky. I go back to the house and there's all these cop cars. <laughs> there's all of this stuff. There's this young woman who looks exactly like Gypsy Rose. So I'm thinking that's maybe her daughter. Maybe the woman went crazy. Maybe she just got, I, I don't know. I don't know. So I go up, but since I'm a storage auction dude and I don't just start admitting stuff because I just sold 90 something percent of furniture in the house with someone with no contract that had some emails Maybe I was covered, maybe I wasn't. So I just kind of hang out on the peripheral, right? I'm listening to the conversation. The little woman that I think is Gypsy Rose's daughter is actually her granddaughter. And she is crying and going off. And this is what I hear. I just got this house in probate. My family and we've been fighting for years about this. Probate. At this point, I am really laying back in the cut. So I keep listening and everything. And then there's the neighbors and they come up. And at this point, I'm getting scared. You know, if you hadn't noticed, I'm pretty memorable. I'm like, I'm 6'1", almost 6'2". Big dude, kind of hard to miss. So I just, some just said, just be cool. Just be cool. So I stayed there. Neighbors come up. And, you know, it's like, we you know there's some activity, but we never really saw anyone. And I'm sitting there like, how the hell did you not see anyone? At that point, I was like, hey, I was here every day selling stuff, people was loading stuff. What's going on? So, at that point, I just leave. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just like, I don't know if this was a, a practical joke. But the word probate scared the shit out of me. Probate means someone died. So, a few weeks go by, I got money, I don't spend any money, I don't spend any money, I don't know what the hell's going to happen, so I'm just sitting on it. Then I get this weird feeling, you know how sometimes you just get this feeling that you should do something, and I got this feeling, so I just email <laughs> Gypsy Rose, and I said, hey, what is the deal here? I went to the house, and there was this woman who looked just like you, and she was crying, and she mentioned probate, I just simply don't understand. And this is where this shit gets off the chain. I get this long email. It's, I can't stand that little bitch. What? <laughs> She's not getting anything of mine. None of them are. None of them are. There were many items in that house that were useful and I knew that you would find good people for them. But none of them will benefit. That was it. That was it. At this point, I'm like really freaked out because I don't know if I'm dealing with someone crazy. I don't feel that she was crazy, but it's just a super, super strange thing. So I go ahead and I spend money and everything. And about six months later, I am out and about and I hear these two guys talking in the Waffle House. And it's like, hey, it's just really a shame what happened to that house. And I'm just sitting there, and I was like, and they were talking, and they mentioned, and it burned down. I was like, burned down? And I'm just being like, is that that house with the really nice shut? I was like, yeah, that was the house. It was super nice. No one lived in it for years. It seems the lady in there, something bad happened to her because she just disappeared. And I was like, wow, really? For real? And I was like, for real? And I was like, that's really messed up. And he's like, yeah, because it was like, and then the guy, he was an older guy, and he's like, yeah, she was just such a sweet young lady. She was just a sweet girl. And I was like, what, what happened? And he tells me, the house has been empty for 30-some years, close to 40. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, no one's been in there. And the owner just disappeared. I'm seriously freaked out. Because I'm like, have I been talking to a ghost? And that's why I didn't do this when the storage auction stuff. I was like, I'm saving this one because I still question my own sanity. So 
I emailed Gypsy Rose again. Was that you? Was that your house? Did you die or something? And I get this sweet email. Darling, things are great where I'm at. Thank you for your help. You have a great life. The end. And then, well, I thought the end. And then another email came through. A deal's a deal. You upheld your end, I upheld mine. And that was it. I don't know. I know you're going to put, go ahead, put the crazy stuff in the, con I don't care. It, it, it's just weird. And this is not the only thing that's happened to me. Uh, there's another one. Some other stuff that's happened, but that's kind of really set the, the whole business on fire. And what I mean is after that year, we just really started to do really, really well because I've had a lot of deals based on just verbal commitment, handshakes, stuff like that, no contracts. And for the most part, most of them went well. And it's, this is just really, really odd. All right. This is Glendon, and that's your hustler story for this week.